Hi, Andrew McLaren here. We're going to go over significant figures today, also known as sig figs, if you're cool. <laughs> uh, basically, what we're going to do is we've got the video sections over here. We're going to go over error because significant figures are just a way to keep track of error. Um, then we're going to go over some of the rules. Um, I don't really like to think of them as, as a set of rules. Um, but I wanted to help you understand why they work the way they do. And then we're going to go over addition, subtraction, how it kind of works. And the same with multiplication, division, while trying to remember not like a list of rules, but trying to understand why we would, we would do one versus the other. That's, that's the big picture. Okay, so when we're talking about sig figs, we're also talking about error. Because the number of sig figs tells you how certain you are of a number. If there's more significant figures, you're very confident about the measurement. If there's less, there, it could be off by a fair amount. So if we look at uh, this guy staying on the scale here, I've put some tick marks so you can kind of see a little bit better. Um, this person weighs more than 115 and less than 120. Um, the exact weight we're not going to be able to get with this device, but we'll be able to get close and tell people roughly how close we got by using significant figures. So this is, it looks to me like 115 and this, this is 120. There's five tick marks. So each one of these is one whole number. So this is 116 and 117. So this is 117. Um, but if you zoom in really close, it's slightly more. So I would say this is 117.1. And the convention with sig figs is that you always give one digit that you don't really know, but you're kind of estimating. So this is, um, if we're writing it with error, this is plus or minus 0.1. It might, might be plus or minus 0.2. So this uh, could be like 117.2 or uh, let's say 117.0. Like it's, it's very easy to think that this person might actually be 117 pounds exactly because we're kind of eyeballing that last number. It's kind of uncertain. So the, the last number right here is uncertain. That's pretty important for when we're talking about significant figures. We'll talk more about that um, throughout the lesson. Don't worry. And the, the nice thing is, if you do this properly, sig figs mean you don't have to take three or five measurements. You just need to do it once. So like this guy's weight, we don't have to do five times and average out to find the actual measurement. In reality, this last number isn't really known. So that's not going to get us any closer to reality if we've indicated that the last digit's unknown. Like we know it's 117 plus a little bit, but we don't know exactly how much. So we don't need to average out all these numbers and give a false sense of um, accuracy that we don't really have. So we've got a, um, a graduated cylinder here. So that you've probably seen this in a chemistry class if you're taking chemistry right now. So if we zoom in, we can see we've got a volume of a little bit more than 210, a little bit less than 250. So uh, I'm just going to actually switch this over to the regular pen because I like to work in it. So we know our answer is somewhere between 250 and um, 210, or I should, this is actually supposed to be 210. So how much is this volume? This volume, or X, I guess is what I wrote up there, is going to be, if we zoom in, it looks like if this is 119, goes up by 20, it marks like, this looks like it's pretty much at the 230 line. But it, it's, a, it's kind of hard to say, but the bottom looks like it's pretty much exactly at 230. 
So I would say that this is like two hundred thirty, and they give us some lines. So they've given us the like if this is the tens place, they've given us the ones place. So we should be able to get even more accurate and say this is one thirty uh, point one, and this is also going to be plus or minus that. Point one. So in this case, this number is 230 plus or minus 0.1, or 230.1 plus or minus 0.1 uh, milliliters. And in sig figs, we would just write that as 230.1. Don't worry, we're going to get some different sig figs on the next one. So we also have a different measuring device here. We've got an Ermeyer uh, flask right here. And if we look at a couple of these filled up, this you can kind of see on the side they give, this is a lot less accurate of an instrument. So it's sig figs are going to be a little bit different with the place value. You can see a 400, a 600, and 800. So it looks like we're somewhere between 800 and 600 here. So we've got 600. and 800. I think it was a pretty much at uh, 700. So this was at 700 milliliters. But um, the error is pretty significant because we don't have any other lines indicating like the tens place. I think the tens place is where we start to kind of guess. So this is kind of like plus or minus 10 milliliters. And you're going to start to see some of the issues. It's like, well, how do you write that in sig figs, right? This is effectively like it could be 710. Uh, it could be like. 690, it's, it could be off by quite a bit. So how do we show that in sig figs? Well, there's a couple ways to do that. So I'll just zoom out a little bit. So we've got scientific notation, which is the best way to do it. So this is 7.1 times 10 up to, what is that? One, two, the second power milliliters, and that really is the best way of doing this. Because um, if you think about this, it's like, okay, one, two, right? So that'd be 710 for those milliliters. So something should be a little bit weird to you at this point, because 710, if you write it like this, is um, kind of confusing because it could mean the uh, the seven point one zero times ten up to the second power. So like you could be giving a false sense of accuracy when you write seven hundred and ten like this. So that's why I don't like to write my um, my significant figures in the standard form is because there's this ambiguity when you have these numbers here. Um, and and we don't want to have any ambiguity. So this is not our answer. And we want to be very careful that we're giving off a level of certainty that we have. Because we have um, the 10 really being our last significant digit here, it's that point 0.1 written there. So it's really important to communicate how certain you are in your measurements. and. When you're thinking through these rules, it's important to think about situations like that. So I'll be referring back to that, don't worry. So if we have another measuring device, just kind of reviewing this, if I had a random line on this, so let's say th this was a pipette, these are like little things that people measure water out with. And so let's say you have a line right there, 
of water, it started at zero and then went down to that volume. So that change, it should be how much water you've added. That's kind of how these things work. So if we read that out, we're going to have, um, it looks like one point something. This was 0 0.5 and this is two. So this is 0.6, like around 0.7. 1.7 and let's say zero because we're we're able to say it's 1.7 and it's pretty much on that line so we can't really say to the next place value how accurate it is but we know it's like okay it, this is pretty much 1.7 for sure and then we're kind of guessing on the last number so if you had a um pipette that would be what that looks like so i also want to show you the same uh, volume of water measured a couple different times so here we've got two volumes of water this is the same water but i measured it with two different uh, measuring cups this one is not very accurate this one is a lot more accurate so if i looked at these and tried to determine their sig figs what I have here is less than 700, more than 600. This looks like that's 650. So I'd say that's like 660, 670, but it's pretty inaccurate, right? So let's say that's 660, uh, but that would be plus or minus 10. So when we write that as sig figs, we uh, would write that as like 660 or the 6. 0.6 times uh, 10 up to the 1, 2 second power. And then if we have this guy over here, you can see actually it is close to 660, but it's a little bit less. So it's uh, like 650. maybe 652 653 it's a small small amount more than 650 but i wouldn't say it's enough to go up to like the next place value 163 and i would say that's plus or minus in reality it's probably plus or minus like two or three or four or five but in general we like to say it's only plus or minus one instead of like the two three four or five because most of the time it is so this i would say is um 153, you could report it like that, or the uh, 6.53 times uh, 10 up to the, that second power. So remember, this is the same volume of water, but here we were, we could be off by like 10 whole milliliters and we wouldn't know. And here we could be off by like one or two, we wouldn't know, but we probably would know if it was at like 660 or, or above, right? Because we've got the 50s, we've got a pretty good degree of certainty there. A little bit more than, than the other one. Um, and then I did a different volume of water. So I'm just going to change color, just because. <laughs> so this is the same volume of water, just measured in a couple different measuring devices. Actually, that's that's a different that's a, the wrong volume of water. It's compared to just these two. So here we've got. It looks like it's a little bit more than forty, not at sixty, but it's a little bit less than the fifty because that's halfway between the two. And this is twenty, so each one of these is worth ten. So it's a little bit more than forty. I'd say like forty-five milliliters. And yeah, I'm, I think I remember the original image. You couldn't even tell because the lines don't go that low on, on the first measuring cup. Yeah, it doesn't go below like 200. So it didn't work trying to measure it in that bigger thing. Here, if you look here, it's kind of hard to say that it's um, super accurate because it looks like this is the one, two, three, four, five. This is 50. This actually seems to indicate that it's more like 30, something like 30, 
3. So this is like 33 milliliters. And yeah, it's kind of weird because this we're saying is plus or minus the, the 1 milliliter. And this is also plus or minus the 1 milliliter. But to be fair, this tool is not measure, made to measure things this small. And so this is going to be a little bit inaccurate when you get this small on this device. It's the same when you stand on like a large scale. Sometimes like if I put my cat on the large scale, it's not going to be very accurate. It needs enough weight to work with. So that's kind of okay with these. In reality, this is the same volume. It's just the lines are, are not perfect when you get this low on this device. So I would trust this a lot more and say that this is more accurate. This is that 45 milliliters, and you could report it like that. Or if you were trying to do scientific notation, this is one situation where it doesn't really matter. You could do either or, and it communicates the same amount of information. So that's that, that volume of water. Okay, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that's if we have like some mass. If I have like some mass, I can weigh that with a digital scale or like an old school triple beam balance. Uh, this right here is weighing as uh, 311 grams. So I can weigh that on this, and it is only accurate to the... Um, actually, this is... 130.5 grams, so that, that number on the bottom is completely wrong. 130.5 grams. And if you have a scale that's like got different accuracy, something like this, it would display it as well. So this, I think, is to the point, uh, the tens place with pounds, so it might not be as accurate as the scale. The scale might be able to get us a more accurate reading. So yeah, this is just so we go over the triple beams. Essentially, they give you place values with different amounts of mass. So this is 130.5 grams for this, this mass. And this, you could easily be off by the, the tenths place. So this would be, if we're thinking about scientific notation, is... It could be off by 0.1. So this could be, and keep this zero in mind for later, because we'll be talking about those captured zeros in this context. So this could be 130.6 or 130.4, uh, so on and so forth. But we write this as um, just the 130. 0.5 uh, grams because the convention is that we know all three of these numbers, including that zero, the captured zero. This last digit is, is uncertain. Time for my sig fig rules. It's not really so much a set of rules. Um, it's more about catching common mistakes. And teachers, they give you a ton of problems to do these, these rules with. And so people just are like, which set of rules am I looking at? And the most common mistake is to do the set of rules for multiplication when you should be doing addition or vice versa. So we want to make sure that we understand what we're doing here but instead of just like a list of steps. That's what we're going to be focusing on. To do that, there's one thing that we need to clearly define before we get started, and that is what is a significant digit. So if I have one of the numbers from earlier, 130.5, um, grams. Right here we have, I'm going to label the the ones that are certain in purple. And then let's say this green one is uncertain. And then all of these are going to be significant. So I'm also going to underline all of these to show that they are all significant. Okay. 
Now it's important to note that when we take a measurement, we're very confident about a number of the, uh, the things we're reading. And then the last one is uncertain. And you've seen that in the intro section where I showed some examples of a number that we're including, but it is kind of a guess, whereas the other ones are known. And so if we think about in this, uh, in this situation, that was the triple beam balance. And we knew for a fact that there was 100 grams, plus another 30. And then if you inc included one, that was too much. And so we know that it should be zero plus a little bit more. And in that situation, we have four significant digits. It's important to determine what is significant in the real world, because that helps you keep track of these rules, especially the ones involving zeros. Because in this situation, it's pretty clear that that zero is a known quantity in the problem. It would be unreasonable to say that that triple beam balance, your readouts are going to be off by like a gram or two because we have like fractions of grams and we can measure to a fraction of a gram. Why would it be off by a whole gram? So if we do another one, let's kind of just look at another number like this. So if we had, um, let's look back. I think maybe we could do the, let's do the 45 milliliters. Yeah. So if we have 45 milliliters, we can say that we've got one certain digit and one uncertain one. So we've got two total uh, significant digits. You should never have more than one uncertain digit because it should just be the last one, the smallest place value. So in this case, we've got two sig figs. Um, and if we think back to that situation, it was reasonable to say, like, we know that it's more than 40, but we don't know exactly how much more. Remember this? It's a little bit more than 40, but we don't know exactly how much. And so we can say, essentially, that this is, like, maybe 10% off. Because uh, if you go to, like, one place value down, it's one-tenth the size. So it's, this is like maybe got a percent error of like 10% in our measurement. This is like 0.1% uh, error that could pot potentially be in that measurement. In other words, this is a lot more certain of a measurement. And so we have more, there's more significant figures. The next thing to keep in mind is these uh, zeros that are sometimes viewed as significant or not. People can get confused by them. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that scientific notation is a lot clearer, and you don't really have extra zeros when you put things in scientific notation. Uh, so no leading or lagging zeros in scientific notation. Super important. That's what I'm writing out. And it's it just makes things clear. So if we looked at this number, if I wrote down 1,200 versus 1,200, 0, 0, and a little decimal point, that shows significance here. Um, and so this could potentially be a number of different things. This could be... Um, 1.2 times 10 up to the 1, 2, 3. Or it could be uh, 1.20 times 10 up to the third power. Because is this the last significant digit? Is this the last one? It's kind of unclear. Um, so this isn't very clear. This one is pretty clear that this has to be the 1.200 times 10 up to the, uh, the third significant digit. So these are okay. This has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 sig figs. Same here. That was those four right there. And then here, it was kind of unclear. It was either 
just two right there, or potentially um, one, two, three right there. So that'd be the three sig figs. So if if you have lagging zeros, they should be significant. Uh, especially if there's a decimal point. If they haven't included a decimal point on one of these standard numbers, you need to be careful. Because it's most likely, uh, in this case, only got two sig figs, unless they clarify otherwise. Also, if we were to convert units and the zeros disappear, those are not significant. So if we have something like this number, 0.00234, and that was grams. And I want to write that as, um, let's say I wanted to do milligrams in one gram, there's 1000 milligrams. And so if we were to write this number, uh, sorry, uh, point zero zero two three four times 1000 you get 2.34, 2.34 milligrams. And so this is, this is equal to that other one, and it still has the, uh, the three sig figs. These zeros in the front, they were not significant. Um, you can think about that if you were to write this in scientific notation, you would see that as well. So we've got the one, two, three, got our three sig figs here. And let's just kind of show this also in scientific notation. This would be that two times 10, or sorry, 2.34 times uh, 10 up to the, what is that? One, two, three, negative three grams. And then that's also just, you know, that number in scientific notation, I and mean, you can write that out. You don't typically write out uh, 10 up to the zeroth power though. So you could do that. And this is the same as, as that number. You can see that they all have three significant figures. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so if I have, let's say like 500 meters, and I wanna know how many kilometers that is, I'm going to have uh, meters, kilometers. In one kilometer, there's 1,000 meters. So 500 divided by 1,000 is 0.5. Kind of makes sense. If you think about it, 500 meters, yeah, it's half of 1,000 meters. So it's half of a kilometer. So this answer, though, is not quite right because I didn't do my sig figs. Did I? Or did I? If this was written just as 500 as is, I would just do fi uh, 0.5 kilometers because there's only one sig fig really shown. Or if they had given me 500.0 or something like that meters, that's four sig figs, one, two, three, four. And so this would be uh, 0.5 and then you'd have those other zeros other kilometers. So you can think about it in a sense that we're saying, well, here I might, it might have been like, if there's only one sig fig, it could actually be like 600 or 400. And so your final answer is only going to be like 0.4 or 0.6 possibly. So you can't be very certain. Here you're saying, not only do I know it's 500 meters, but I know it to, um, accurate down to the last meter, and I'm kind of guessing on this last one. So I really know this number in terms of meters, so I should really know that number in terms of kilometers to the same uh, amount. Okay, so if we're looking at that number 00234 uh, grams, you can think of this as, because we have three sig figs, you can think of the third number as, you know, 10, 100 times smaller than the biggest number. So in reality, 
your device is measuring with about one one percent of inaccuracy because these place values are kind of inaccurate compared to the largest one if you were to accidentally include these zeros you're saying that it's accurate up to not 100 but like 10,000 times bigger than the smallest place value which is not the case and um, when you multiply it's really about like that percentage or that's at least how I like to think about it so you need to be careful about these leading zeros and lagging zeros if you were to convert units and they disappear um, or if you were to turn it into scientific notation and they disappear they're not really significant zeros that's how I think of it Okay, let's talk about why captive zeros must be significant. We already did a little bit when we talked about this example earlier, a few minutes ago. But if you were to weigh something on a digital scale, it might give you a number like this. And the last number is kind of uncertain, remember? And what that means is that on the scale, that might fluctuate a little bit, but these other ones are staying constant. If you were to have like a triple beam balance, you might put like 100 kilograms out and it's not quite heavy enough. And so you put 110 kilograms, that's too heavy, right? So you know that it's more than 100 kilograms, but it's less than 110. That's essentially what we've got going on here is that we knew that 110 kilograms was too heavy. So we went down to 101, that wasn't heavy enough, 102, 103, 104, 105. And then 106 was too heavy. So they had to go a little bit lower. So we knew that there was 105 grams plus a little bit. So in that context, the zero is absolutely significant because we know there has to be zero 10 or groups of 10 grams. Like we have less than that. We know we've got one 100 of grams plus something that's less than uh 10 grams, so it's about 5 grams actually. And so that's kind of how that works out in that situation. All right, the last part, this can be confusing even for me sometimes, but an exact number we don't include in significant figures because we know it exactly. In, in essence, it has infinite sig figs, some people will say. So if you have like uh, 4 quarters is equal to $1, that's a ratio that we know to be true, and you wouldn't need to include that to, in some sig figs measurement. Um, if you have something like, you know that 2 of A uh, will react with 3 of B, and they're going to do some sort of reaction, saying 2 of these molecules will, will react with every 3 of these molecules, that is an exact ratio because you can't really have a fraction of a molecule um, it, to do this reaction. You have to have exactly two, and they react with exactly three. And in the context of chemistry, you can imagine you're weighing out all this stuff, and just because you're having a reaction take place, that doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to be off by 100% in your final calculation. So we don't include these things in um, in calculations because they they're known to be infinitely accurate. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with that is like Avogadro's number. Oh man, I've forgotten it off the top of my head. But I think it's something like that, ten up to the twenty third. Avogadro's number. This is yeah, it's got four sig figs here, but that's just how it's written. Uh, this thing can be written much more accurately. And so it really shouldn't be limiting your sig fig problems because usually they'll get limited to like two, three, four, maybe five sig figs. And the same thing with like uh, molar masses is that those could limit your sig figs, but they shouldn't really. So this is um, technically you're going to include some of those things in, in your calculations, but effectively they're they're so certain, uh, they're very much like an exact number. Also, be careful. One inch is defined by centimeters. It's just because our uh, imperial system is very strange. 
in its origin on how things were measured. Centimeters are, are much more consistent in how they're measured. The metric system is just better. Um, so this is an exact conversion. Although it looks like there's three sig figs, this is the definition of an inch. So it's actually um, same uh, saying one inch is equal to 2.54 to like infinite, infinite zeros. Like this just goes on for forever centimeters. Because an inch is defined by centimeters, that one goes on for forever. So just be careful because sometimes you'll have uh, things that look like they're limiting your sig figs but they're not because they're they're a known ratio and uh, they're very very accurate for any significant figure when we combine that with another number the smaller error error gets covered up but it does so by looking at the lowest place value in addition and subtraction problems and for multiplication and division it's a little different but it's important to keep in mind that this is going to be adding two similar things. I mean, when you do addition, that kind of makes sense. You wouldn't add like grams to, to I don't know, milliliters, like two different quantities. So if we have a distance that you've driven and that say your car is displaying accurate to um, a 10th of a kilometer and you, meet up with your friend and you're trying to figure out how far it would be to go to their house. Maybe your friend rode their bike 2.56 kilometers and you want to know like the total distance. So if you're asking what the total distance is, your friend's got more accurate measurements made. They're using their phone and the odometer on their phone to do that. Um, but long story short, it's all about this place value right here, the tenths place value determining um, how accurate our overall distance will be. OK, so I've got a lot of numbers up here. Just give me a second. I want to show you the smaller error kind of getting covered up. So we've got, in this case, 1.4 plus 2.56. When you add those two numbers, it gets to that. And then I've rounded it. And so I'm rounding these uh, to the nearest uh, tenths value. So. If you look here, if we make these numbers slightly different, it does affect our final number. But if I look at making the uh, more accurate number slightly different, it doesn't affect our final number. It has a very small effect on things. So in essence, the, um, the one with a smaller error it doesn't really matter if that's off a little bit. It doesn't really change our final answer. The one with larger error, if that's off by, like in this case, 10%, our final answer should also be off by 10%. So by giving two significant digits here, we're saying this final answer of 4.3 is reasonable. But if you actually had like 4.4 or 4.2, that's, you know, that's also somewhat reasonable given our uncertainty driving our car. So if we add up the 1.7 and the 2.56, the uh, 1.7 plus the 2.56, you get uh, an answer of 4.26. But when you actually think about the sig figs, this is 4.3. And remember, we're basically saying, all right, this is certain. This is uncertain, but they're both significant, right? Because we had some certainty, and we were very certain about these. But there was a little bit of uncertainty there, a little bit of uncertainty there. And so ultimately, when we have uncertainty, that's going to cover up the, the level of certainty. It doesn't matter if we have five here um, exactly. The seven here could be off by a little bit, so we need to be careful. So if we look at another example of this, maybe you have um, 
some measuring cup that's going to give you like accurate to milliliter. So let's say you've got 25 milliliters of volume and then you have 21.5 milliliters of volume. This one only has two sig figs. And so our answer has to also have two sig figs. So if we combine these, you get your 25 plus the 21.5, you get 46.5. But if we actually round that, we can say that this is actually uh, 46 milliliters. You can't say it's accurate to the 0.5 because we don't know this this could be off by by quite a lot this could be off by a whole milliliter so our final answer could be off by a whole milliliter and if you think about like okay i'm measuring two things this one could be off by a whole milliliter and i put them together the final answer should also be inaccurate to that milliliter as well because we had the the two sig figs And um, same here, this had two sig figs. So our final answer had to be two sig figs big. When we multiply two numbers, it's important to keep track of the place values. Those determine sig figs. But I like to think of it as percent certainty. That's just how my brain works with these. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So if we had like 3,880, and if we were looking at that in terms of sig figs, it's got one, two, three, four, four place values that are being used. Um, we've got three certain and one uncertain. So we've got our four sig figs. In essence, what you're saying is this number that is uncertain is um, 10, 100, 1,000 times is less accurate than the biggest number, also known as 0.1% uncertain like yeah it might be 3881 or 3882 but that's only off by a very small amount now if i had 12 this could be very inaccurate this could be um like actually 13 or 11 that's a pretty big difference that's a difference of about 10 percent so if we have two place values, then you only have two significant figures. That's saying, okay, like this answer is gonna be like 10% off. Or this number could be 10% off from what it actually is. So if you multiply these two numbers, if you got the 3880 times 12, let's go ahead and do that. You get 46,560. But this we have, would have to round because it's not that accurate. It would be misleading to say it's that accurate. It was limited by having two place values there. So our final answer should also have two place values that are being used. Um, so this is 47,000 or the 4.7 times 10 up to the 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth power. Okay, so let's look at an actual example of this using some values. So you have some density of some object. It weighs 12.5 uh, grams, so you've weighed it on the scale. And then you also measure out the volume of it, and you find it to be 1,000 milliliters. Um, in this context, then we can find density. Density is usually given in grams per milliliter. So we want to make sure we're using the right units. In any case, for density, the formula for density is just a uh, mass over volume. So we can plug these numbers in and solve for density. Before we do that, you can see that this number has 
three sig figs. So let's just label that. And then this number, which I've also written in the scientific notation, just to be clear, has four sig figs. And so we're limited by the one that's less accurate here. So you can see that um, if we have the, the numbers and we plug them in, we should be able to solve for the density. So we've got uh, one or the 12.5 grams, and this is over the 1,000 milligrams. And yeah, you don't really have to line up place values when you're doing this because they're, they're different quantities, so you're not comparing place values um, for adding them. So we can just do that, that division problem. So if we do that, you get the 12.5 divided by 1,000. So we get an answer of point, sorry, was it zero? Zero, one, two, five. grams per milliliter. Now this is uh, saying that we have three significant figures right now because it's one, two, three. Remember that zero doesn't count as significant because if we convert it to like um, milligrams, that would just disappear. Or if we wrote this in scientific notation, it'd also disappear. So this answer is actually fine written as is. Here one, to five uh, grams per milliliter. I might just, yeah, scoot this over. Grams per milliliter. <laughs> just to show that that was um, rounded to the three sig figs. So we got three, and we got three there. So that's okay to write like that. Or you could write this out as uh, 1.25 times 10 up to the, what is that? One, two, minus two grams per milliliter. Okay. Um, I did also want to show you, like I did on the other problem, I want to show you how multiplication kind of works when you combine two different numbers. So here you can see that I've combined uh, 1.51 times 15.43, and I just multiplied those two. And in this case, we have um, three significant digits. And so our answer can be accurate to three significant dig digits, um, implying that that last one is a little bit uncertain. So it doesn't really matter how accurate this number is. This uncertainty makes the final answer only accurate to three significant figures when we do some rounding. You can kind of see that in this one as well. I've got a number with five sig figs and another one with six sig figs. And so when I tweak the number with six sig figs, it doesn't really affect our final answer. It's getting um, kind of covered up by the number with five sig figs. The, the smaller error gets covered up or the larger error ends up causing our significant figures to be limited. So you can see that in here, this one has, oh, messing up my, my sheets. This one only has five sig figs, so the answer is only gotta be accurate to five-ish. It's, it's gonna be significantly changed when you change these numbers. It will start changing our other, our rounded answer. That's just a different way of looking at that. Okay, so we've got this formula for relating pressure and volume in time one and time two. So if you have some gas, it's got one at atmosphere, and it takes up two liters of volume, you might wonder, okay, if I were to compress that down to a smaller volume, how much atmosphere does it have, and how accurate can I say that that value is? So if we rearrange this, that question mark is equal to this uh, divided by that. So it's just a little rearranging of the formula. 
and we plug that in. We get 1 times 2, which is 2, divided by 0 0.1, should be 20, right? Yeah, should be 20 atmospheres. So we've got our 20 atmospheres. But keep in mind, we have only accurate to one significant figure here. Yeah, these were able to go to two significant figures, but this smallest number here is pretty inaccurate. So we're going to be kind of inaccurate in the atoms, uh, atmospheres that we're able to uh, report back. So this is 2 times uh, 10 up to the um, that first power atmospheres. And you can think about that in terms of, yes, I had this accurate to about 10%, and that was accurate to about 10%, but this could have been off by a whole 100%. Like, this was pretty, pretty inaccurate. So our final atmospheres should also be pretty inaccurate. So I would report it with that scientific notation just to be clear. Um, most teachers would probably take that. But it is not written like this with a decimal point. Be careful of that. OK. One last thing I want to talk about is that there can be repeated addition, which we write as multiplication. So be careful of that. Now, this example is kind of an advanced example. Don't worry about the science so much. In the formula, this is like AP Chem, advanced AP Chem stuff. But long story short, you can see that I'm adding together things of the same unit. And then there was also some multiplication in here. So I got a little bit confused when I was doing this because there was like a 2x. But I could easily write that out as x and x. So it is still just like addition and subtraction for my significant figures. So this one, uh, the significant figures were determined by the, uh, the place value, not the number of sig figs. So you can kind of see that the numbers they gave me the place value that was smallest was the ones place, so the final number can only be accurate to the ones place. It doesn't matter about the place values. Sure, there was three and two, but we're not going to limit this to just two sig figs because, well, that's the wrong rule, right? So just be careful with those rules, okay? Uh, thank you for joining me. This has been Mr. McLaren. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about, and remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia, and if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wyzant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon, and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.